the topic that we are discussing today that you did a critical summary on. We are doing roles as justice as fairness. Uh, as one of our, the third stream of questions we are dealing with in the course. We, we needed to also engage what, what we labeled as a communist manifesto and also the libertarian yeah, okay. manifesto. And we build More on than, it. I will take the rest of the issue. Yeah. So I would, I would want us all to engage from that and let me know what you read on uh, any of the three teams. The, the substantive team is roles is justice as fairness, but it would be built on, or it, if you like, it presupposes discussions from the manifestos of the communist, uh, communist and then the one from the libertarians. I want to hear from the class. Anyone tell us what you read, what you saw in the readings. We've even done a critical summary on that. So let's do that quickly. What did you see when you read? Oh, those who are flagged red. Let's take, let's take it one at a time. So let's hear you quickly, please, okay? On what you, you saw, Mr. Mkabe. Thank you, Eunice, go ahead. So, um, Rose? Hello. I can hear you, Eunice, go ahead. Okay. Rose brought out a theory on how we can reach a truly fair and just society. And he proposed the original position. And in this idea, it says that everyone will come together to form a social contract and reach an agreement. And in reaching the agreement, um, it will provide a brothers protect everyone to come together in completely an impartial and biased form to find principles that everyone everyone can reach a just and fair society. So when we are in the original position, he brought out um, a hypothetical thought where he says that in that position, we will have the veil of ignorance. And everyone will forget about every detail of themselves, but your race, your, your gender, every important detail of yourself in order to make the, the decisions and in order to make in order to form the point that's what it's saying. very good it's a good start well done can someone add to what Eunice just set us off with nicely they're doing roles is justice as fairness you can take it from roles or I'm just brainstorming with you because it is a text it has some technicality. So, you know, I like to engage the text itself with you before I come and talk plenty about it, text. Otherwise, you, you, it, will, it will not make a lot of sense. So you should see what the person said. And because the philosophy paper, want to help ourselves see it together. Then afterwards, we can now engage it. Engage it means you are asking questions of it, you are criticizing, you are contributing to it, you are amplifying it, you are practically using it and all that. We can do that, but we, we first of all want to be sure that we know what we think Rawls said and why he said what he said or the reasons he offered to say what he said and so on. That's the grounds we are covering first. So let us know what you also saw. That was Eunice's contribution, a very good one at that. When she started speaking and I started typing what she's saying, I know where to take it from. I see 43 others, and it's still counting. What do you also want to add? So what did she touch on? When she was speaking, I think I heard her uh, mention original position. She had earlier said, Rawls proposes a certain theoretical framework, or just to make it very simple, made some suggestions about how resources should be distributed 
not just the good, but also the burdens. So not just the benefits of society, but also the burdens of society, how they should be shared, how they should be distributed. So if you are looking on my screen, my board, as I write, we are doing justice as fairness and we are focusing on John Rawls. Of course, like I said earlier, you can't do Rawls raw without having in mind some preceding discussions on the Communist Manifesto, the Libertarian Manifesto. It helps set the frame very well for you to see what the contention is. Should I be doing that which benefits me? What is the extent to which government is able to quote and unquote interfere in that which is supposedly mine, my labor, my right, my freedom, et cetera. Okay, so that contention is ongoing. I, I will take responses from you all on that to enrich the discussion. If I see that the class is not ready, we'll end it. You know how we do it already. See, we have to be resourceful students. And I suppose that that is the class we are going to have today. So against that background, John Rawls, according to units now, is making some propositions. And he mentions, and units echoes that original position in the decision-making process. She touched on the veil of ignorance. She even mentioned something like it's hypothetical. I'm just uh, making, a, if you like, a, a patch to help our focus as we, as we discuss. Okay, so she says it's hypothetical. She mentioned the fact that we are dealing with a distributive kind of what justice, how to share it. It's not just the meaning of justice he's concerned. He's not doing a, an, a linguistic analysis of the concept of justice, no. He is showing how not just benefits, but also what? Burdens of society has been distributed. So how to uh, distribute benefits and burdens of society. And to do that, it, it now talks about the pain of ignorance and all. Very good, Eunice. It says something small, but it had so much in it. Let's take Naomi now. Thank you. Go ahead, Naomi. What did you see? Or what do you want to add? OK, so Doc, um, according to your in the in the original position or the veil of ignorance um a society in the veil of ignorance would need two basic principles in order for um in order for a just society yes yeah, so according to raw he came about with two principles in his theory and the first one he mentioned was he termed principle regarding equal liberty so he termed it equal okay. liberty principle and according to law under this principle or regarding this principle each person is to have equal rights to most extensive basic liberties like that of wealth general care health care and then the others and then the second um, principle he came about was social and economic equality and according to law, regarding this second principle too, economic inequalities are expected to, to be to everybody's advantage. Everybody is to benefit from this inequality. And in order for everyone to benefit from these inequalities, according to law, these, uh, these um, amenities are supposed to be attached to special positions. And it has to be open to all so that everybody can have access to it. Yes, so these are the two basic principles I also saw in the readings. Yes. Hey, you have done very well, all of you so far. I'm impressed. I can tell though that some of them are points you've made, you've written down, which is okay. So far as you can refer to it and speak, there is no qualms about that at all. Okay, so well done. I, I think that uh, it captures. Uh, substantively what is in the text for us. Very good, Naomi, thank you. Let's see if someone else wants to add to that. Very good. So I see 
Mary Kunsin and I see George Frederick. And since two ladies have spoken of it, let me take George first, then I'll come back to Mary. Go ahead, George Frederick. Dochi, yeah. Hello, Doc. So, Hello. Um, I, I also um, came across the term principle of justice, which Good. according to Rawls is the basis of his theory. So mm -hmm. in this position, he, he says that the theory that is a story that anyone in the original position will accept because he believes the outcome of this should be just and fair because it does not support a, a specific or a particular class of people. And uh, this principle too is not one-sided. Uh -huh. And um, I think with, with that, he also uh, moved on to say that with this principle, it is to the greatest benefit of the least advantage. Yes. So, Dr. that's what I also heard. Okay, thank you very much. I just tried to coin it in a way that will add what we've been saying so far. So, thank you very much. He says that the Rawls' focus is to give a principle a rule, if you like, think of it as a guideline. I don't want to be all technical because the text already gives you too many technicalities and too many, uh, too many buts and ifs and, you know, you have to look out for this and balance it and equity, not equality. And, you know, so we should converse about it. Let's make it like a conversation. So what her friend has added is that Rawls advises us to see what he's doing as what? Just working out a principle, something that works for all. In other words, it's a rule that will guide what we are doing. It is itself not a perfect thing, but it will guide how we make distributive justice meaningfully well. That's what he's doing. So this is what uh, our friend tells us. He says that if, like others have already touched on the original position, if we did what he's proposing, and we use that as a rule of thumb, something to look at when we have to make a decision about sharing burdens and benefits. Then rational human beings, I just had to introduce that from, I, I extract that from what your friend said. As human beings that are rational, we think for, uh, you know, we make decisions that will benefit us. We will think in a rational way. Then we will agree to this principle. In other words, your friend said it to be acceptable to all, all what? all who are rational human beings, they will accept principles that are regulated by what he's proposing. If we are embarking on justice, as he rules, defines it, so the principle of justice, which principle does he have, have in mind? Is it the principle of equality? No. He says the principle of what? Fairness, being fair. So, his principle of justice that uh, your friend touched on is what justice as fairness. And so I can introduce that now. Justice as, look at the word, fairness. Being fair may not necessarily mean being just, uh, excuse me, may not necessarily mean treating people equally. You can treat people fairly. That doesn't necessarily mean treating them equally. Okay? So we are opening it out slowly, but certainly. And then your friend tells us that Ross says, this principle will be acceptable to all. What he has proposed, which I, we can take from Naomi and Eunice earlier, these two in one principle that are further broken down into two. So, <laughs> Rano, I am confused, but since he I am confused. He is adding so many things because he's looking out for the libertarians' concerns and the communists, if you like, or those who emphasize the society. This is those who emphasize the individual at the same debate. She is looking out for both interests that they have. From the social contract through to Rousseau, through to a uh, uh, wolf, wolf's autonomy issue that we had. That, look, don't come and sit on my rights. Even if I'm obeying what you are saying, I'm obeying because I think I see reason in it. I would never give away my autonomy in the name of looking for, I won't be subservient to anyone and so on and so forth. We've had all, all those debates, it's still the same contention. Now we see it, someone trying to do a mediation, just like Taylor tried to mediate between individualists and if you like, communitarian. So that is the build up till now. And so look at what three people have said and it has captured a good part of the content. I'll still take more and I'll be filling in 
take note because we are rational. That's the assumption. If we were even behind the supposed veil of ignorance, where we don't know where we would become. Mm -hmm. That is at the original position where we haven't had supposedly, there comes our hypothetical situations again, where we haven't had contact with actual human habitation. So we don't know what the benefits will be to us, the ones making the decision. We assume that we do not know. So we wear a veil of ignorance. It's a veil, something you use to cover up, to pretend that you don't know who will benefit from this decision. Suppose you didn't know who will get A or B, right? You were making a, a law, you know, for those who will get A in the course. You are part of those making the decision, but you can't tell the grade you will get. How will you make the decision? So that assumption that you do not know the impact of that your decision in actual society is what we call wearing a veil of ignorance. You wear that veil. You are going to make laws for Ghana. You don't know whether your son or your daughter or you yourself will caught by that law. Whether the law will hold you accountable negatively or the law will hold others accountable for your benefit. How will you make the law? You will make it in a way that either way, if you were caught by the law, you will not suffer much. And if the law caught someone on your behalf, the person, you also not be cheated. So you will make a fair law. This is what Ross is saying. If you assumed an original position, if you assumed that you were not integrated into society without any interconnectedness, you don't know who your brother would be or sister would be whether you will be the judge or you will be the culprit in the, in the uh, stand there, being, uh, being uh, what's the expression, being cross-examined. You don't know whether you will be the judge, you will be the lawyer, or you will be the uh, convicted criminal. All this means you are assuming that you were at an original position without any attachments to society. See that? How many times I've said the same thing? So that is the original position. At the original position, you wear a veil of ignorance. And Rawls says, if these two assumptions are made on the basis of what you being a rational human person, rationality is assumed, then the consequence will be these principles that he proposes, which he labels as what? Well a system or, a, excuse me, a system, a principle of justice that will be what, fair. So hypothetical, distributive justice, both benefits and burdens, assumed at a, an original position where you're wearing a veil of ignorance will produce these two principles that uh, Eunice earlier set us off and now we eloquently opened out. The equal liberty principle, and then the second one, the one that will try to bridge what the social and economic inequality with the aim of make, what, what will be done will ultimately occur for everyone's well being. It will meet everyone's advantage ultimately. The supposed seeming discrimination in it will balance out and meet everyone's. Advantage. So he cautions that those inequalities should be attached to special positions. There are people that when we are all in traffic, they are allowed by this law, in other words, by the laws of Ireland, to cross their traffic. You will be there. They are going to write an eye. Nobody cares. Stay in the traffic. But that person with a crown on his or her car that he has we bought for him or her will come and pass people with an escort. <laughs> See how your heart is pumping. Yes. Just like someone also who is involved in a very serious accident, the heart is coming out, will come and jump the queue at the hospital there in the name of emergency. When you also went with your headache, or better still, maybe you went with a pimple on your cheek, which is disturbing your relationship bad. You see? So it is a, it's an important thing to you. That's why you left class and you're sitting in the queue there. Well, that person will jump the queue. <laughs> and, and so I use those funny examples sometimes to help you at the banking hall. Some people will jump the queue. I keep using the queue to show you that you were there first. 
If they were treating you with equality, then the one who comes in first should be served first. But this grandma, or better still, this pregnant woman who is looking all posh, but her tummy is that long, it's, it's almost falling off. That comes there, we will not come and stand in the queue too. We will take her to that, the room there, count all her money for her, she will go out in the name of justice as being fair. Am I the one who impregnated her? Hello? <laughs> but she will jump there. All right, please, can you hear me now? I hope please. you can hear me. Let's go. Uh -huh. I stopped talking a long time ago <laughs> because I think I noticed a break in our network. I suspect, uh, but we are good. Yo. So we continue from where we were. I was just elaborating, if, if you like, on the the equal liberty, uh, but I don't want to do all the talking. Because today is your day and you're doing extremely well today. I'm even surprised myself. So I want you to do the talking. I, I was just inter, interspersing it with one or two comments to keep you on track. Then we continue. I was just saying that the equal liberty principle is looking out for uh, those who stress on liberties, freedoms, uh, you know, our autonomy and stuff like that. They, they, philosophical perspective that things are known. You have to look at our rights, our freedoms, our entitlement, we the individuals. So there, there we go. Okay. Ross is trying to meet them extremely because there's a strong argument there. At the same time, he wants to look out for those who say, that, look, people start off disadvantaged. We are a collective. We have certain things that others do that benefits you, the supposed individual and stuff like that. So we should be concerned about the welfare of the collective us. So he tries to look out for that also. And that is where you see the social and economic inequality, which is supposed to be to the advantage of all. So there is a certain benefit, the medical doctor of a certain type, you see, will have. That excuse me, and with all respects to every profession, but certain folks won't have it. Look at the workers in a factory, for, for example. Look at how much work and energy they put in there. But you'll be amazed that they might not take as much as, you know, if you like, the medical doctor or a certain level, like the president of the nation or something will have. It's not just the prestige associated with it, but it is also sometimes because of some other factor. They benefit, uh, 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 their advantage, so to speak, will auger for what the welfare of all. one doctor taking care of, maybe if it's a heart surgeon and there are just 20 of them and we are 30 million in the nation. You can imagine. We want him to, or her to be as comfortable as he or she can because he, he or she is taking care of the heart. So that benefit, all those entitlements, what have you that we may decide as a nation to give to that person seemingly as if on equal treatment, why are they being given this and that? That guy will not be in the traffic. He cannot be. 
if traffic is that intense, he will get an escort and come and cross all of us and go, including whoever. Why? Because he has to take care of hearts. So there goes the seeming disadvantage that really ultimately, according to Rawls, is thinking, which we all may want to share in and discuss going forward. According to that thinking, that dis supposed disadvantage, in other words, he has been given an advantage over us, the others who are in the queue there, in the traffic, will ultimately augur well for us. Why? Because he will go and take care of the heart of a, uh, who, who can I use as an example of, say, the president? and save him so we don't have issues with our presidency or he'll go and take care of some heart of that. That's the point we are making. So then in the long run to benefit us when it seems to be a disadvantage of any kind. Very good. Let's take more inputs from all of you. So I see, uh, I can take Mary now, then we can go to Benedict and Kama and also Daniela and Marco. Keep going. Mary, please go ahead. What did you see in Rose? You can take us from any of the angles we've done so far through your life. Thank you. Okay. Um, I also learned about the two conditions with social and um, the how social and economic inequality can satisfy um, these conditions here. And one is fair equality of opportunities. And the other one also is the difference principle. And with the fair equality um, of opportunities, it talks about how um, individuals could be open to, how individuals has to be open to um, positions and offices. It doesn't, it shouldn't um, be in a way that maybe this person is from a poor society or this person is poor or this person is rich, so he or she will be given the position. But it should be done um, equally, yeah, it should be done in a just way. So that maybe if the, uh, if someone is having um, the skills, in maybe any opportunity, then the person can be fixed there. And the second one is the difference principle. And it also talks about how um, the social and economic equalities are to be arranged so that it will be it will be at the greatest benefit of the at least least advantaged members of the society so at least like maybe when um, money is being shared in a society mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um there are two people like the poor and the rich the poor must be given more and the rich must be given less because um, the poor, the rich person is seen to, to have enough already. So the um, poor person has to be given more, which is uh, classified as the equity, which can also be um, fairness. Yes, please. That's what I learned. Very good. Well done. Well done. Today, they are giving everyone one plus one. Hey, Emmanuel, what, what trick did you people use today? People have read Basa. <laughs> okay, let me take uh, Benedict and Kama. Then I'll come to Daniela. Please put up your hand if you still have to add something. I'll take all of you. Okay. Then we can sum up now. Benedict, go ahead. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, madam. Okay. So, madam, I also learned, I also learned um, about the Lithuanians, and I stand to be corrected, though. Um, for my learning, I got to know that the libertarians, they focus on liberty and equality, but then again, they prioritize um, liberty. Okay, so they focus more on okay. liberty and freedom. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Set the tension between... Hello? Hello, my lady. I can hear you. Sorry, I interrupted a little. I shut up now. Continue. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so Rawls came in to settle the tension between and liberty by imposing a hypothetical theory that as justice as fairness, like proposing and proposing justice as fairness to settle the tension. That is what I also learned from that. Very good, very good, Benedicta. Thank you so much. I'll take uh, Daniela now. Daniela, go ahead. Oh, your point has been taken. Okay, if Daniela is not 
available that I can take Isaac Tay, and then afterwards, Christabel Bafua Ufuri yeah. appear. Go ahead, Isaac. Hello, dog. Yes, sir. Please, um, I also learned. I learned about social and economic. That is, um, I learned uh, about the attachment special positions and offices. Uh, how individuals should not be it when you come um, getting um, access to positions and offices. That uh, we should not meet uh, in our. Uh, either explicitly or we should be all uh, giving everyone a due advantage that is supposed to be given to. Okay, so for access, for we must we must very good. We must all have the same access. The thing must be accessible yes, to if it is a yeah. So if it is a uh, a company, what's the thing? Uh, we are, we are, I don't want to use that technical word. How do you say it? You're advertising for a job opportunity or for people to come and, uh, oh, I'm trying to get this business language. Uh, you, 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 are, you are selling a product, a service, and you want people to, you're advertising for people to come and buy it. You don't do so sourcing unless it is extremely necessary. You have to make it open, open it, accessibility. But then within the system, you can try to close up and take care of the disadvantages that some may have. So think of, I always use the uh, our special student when I'm making uh, these examples. We cannot give equal exam time to every one of you. When some supposedly, you see, are you supposedly advisedly? Because uh, if we want to stretch the argument, then everybody will say we all have a special need of a kind, which I'm slow in remembering things. Someone who says, me too, when I read, I suffer before I know, me too, that's my, <laughs> my special need. So then you have to give me also some time. But we are talking about the one that is supposedly identified as a special need, it's special, it's distinct. So we will give everyone one hour, for the exam, and we see that for our special students, especially with visual impairment, for the specific assessment, you have to give it half the time addition. Now, the thing is accessible to all of us. We are all vying for access into the, the university, for example. But if the person has so and so and so speciality, not necessarily being blind or, you know, the, the way we say it, but maybe the person comes from a place where it is even difficult to have light, there's no electricity there. Girls don't go to school there. The living conditions there are tough and stuff like that. Then we may say, well, yeah, the cutoff point is at grade six for everyone. That is the, it is open to all. Everyone should apply, compete for the position, yes. But then when we do the shortlisting and all these people got inside, then we can now apply the second principle, which I'm here to hear any one of you explicitly bring it out, but it's understandable. At least you have read around it. Arrange the opportunity in such a way, such a way that the, the one that is most disadvantaged will benefit more. So there we go. You have made it accessible to all because you respect everyone equally. You treat everyone as a human being, not as a means to an end, yes. So you ensure equal liberty. Then you are arranging the inequalities that exist in a way that by the time you finish, you are bridging the gap that will, this bridging of gap where you make someone have more than the other and stuff like that, will ultimately benefit the collective us. So the, in, your, in one of your references, it says that, is it not in your advantage that your lecturer is paid well? <laughs> it's paid better, so to speak. It is in your advantage as a student. If my dentist receives more, I use the heart surgeon. There are nine of them in Ghana. He had a urologist or something. There's nine. Sometimes to, for you to go for a checkup or for a heart surgery or something, you may have to book 
some examinations, you book for three years. If it's an emergency, you will die. Some three months, six months, you are on a queue. Not that six months before they will do it. Every week, they are having maybe 30, 40 surgeries. But in the queue, you are normal. 600 and something. So it will get your turn in the ninth month. The people are be overwhelmed. That person, shouldn't he have access to a scholarship for, I did not say scholarship, sponsorship for his children or his wife, his family? Should he have, shouldn't he have a certain kind of allowance? Because he doesn't do anything. He can't even pick his children from school. He's just standing there healing and saving people's lives. You don't want to care about the person's welfare. So treating that person with some speciality, seemingly disadvantageous, would rather ultimately, yeah, this is the argument of well, this is the second one, ultimately be to the benefit of the entire society. That is what the difference principle that uh, Lady Elia mentioned is meant to be. Thank you very much. I'll take uh, Christabel Bafo. Baf, ba, I'm sorry, Christabel Bafo. For your pianist, then I can take a see and do his hand and joy seeking. Go ahead, Krista. Hello, Doc, can you yes, ma'am. I can hear you clearly. Go ahead. Uh, I wanted to elaborate on the difference principle, but please, already given please elaborate. Examples. Oh, I was talking too much. Uh, hey, to, yeah, <laughs> I want to talk about how <laughs> the world there is already inequality and. We're also yes, talking yes. about how we can use that inequality to like uh, advantage, like to benefit yes. those who are less advantaged. So yes. I wanted to make an example. You already made the lecture. I did it. I did it. Example. I did it. I did it. Use it again. I wanted to make an example, like how um, those rich in the society they should succeed so yeah. that they can make more jobs for those less privileged so that they can also have money to cater for their family. Uh -huh. Well done. That is what and someone also, like husband. Mm. Okay. Oh, sorry, finish. Yeah. And also the equality of opportunity. I wanted to add up that um, respect, um, those with equal and age, equal and similar talent should be given the same opportunity. So that they can all succeed. Very good. Life. Very good. Now that is so so important. So the point then is to ask: Why should I be worried about feeding the poor or making sure that the poor in society also have something? To do? If I'm rich, why should it be my? I'm not a benu. I mean, a philanthropist. <laughs> this one, because it's not a matter of philanthropy. They are not allowing you to do it as you will. Okay, I have some used clothing. They are not that bad, so I want to give to them. No, no, no. The, the, the case is being made for it as a right. It is being taken. This is what Hospice, John Hospice and his friends, who are libertarians, mostly well-endowed folks in society, do not agree. And they are not just saying they don't agree because uh, they are rich. No, they are making a philosophical claim that government cannot doesn't have a legitimate right to take from me in the name of tax to feed someone else. Why? So we have to show from rules why this is important. Okay. Why should the rich be interested, so to speak, or uh, uh, well, in the name of the difference principle, why should the, the rich be taxed? Okay, Madam says that if you are if you are an affluent person in society. See that the point is this whole you should be interested in that because otherwise you can't drive your in the past it was hammer. Now they say it's what <laughs> I'm old school pal. How much too much? What's the latest car now? V8. It's like that one guy has got Rolls Royce near the May They are no longer raining. Which, which is the raining car, brothers? Help me. <laughs> Eh, or you too, you too, is a lachano. You can't drive your Benz in peace. Yo, Brian, I've heard you say. You can't drive it in peace. When you are sleeping and society, that's the collective has having taken care of 
as much as possible, at least the basic needs, take note, basic, of others in the society. You won't enjoy your, your uh, designer food in peace. You can have six cars in your compound unless you go and get a, a security man about three. Three security men standing at the gate. You have security doors. You have security doors. You yourself, when you're sleeping and you get, you get to check, you wake up, you can't sleep. There will be no peace for you yourself. Says, I mean, if we dragged it and opened it out to be very simple conversation. This is what we're also saying. It is in your interest that you set up companies in the name of uh, social uh, responsibility. Eh? Do that. Let people get work to do. So that the hunger in the system will go down. <laughs> because a hungry man is an angry man. So don't think you are doing it for someone. It will be to the advantage of all if we took from some and gave to others. Which people, those who are disadvantaged, will be asked to receive from the others as a principle. It's a guiding principle that will regulate how the society is being managed. That's why we are, we, we, we are taxed. Before I get my money that I've worked for, brothers and sisters in the Lord, Someone takes <laughs> their own before I get mine. I have worked for it with my money. But a certain percentage is taken to do what? I buy Coke before I open the Coke to drink. A certain percentage has been taken out. I have paid for it and given to someone. Hey, maybe it's an That's what the hospice and the libertarians are against. So when you see minimal societal, I don't want to give you all the clues. I think that you, you have done your own job already. So it's my game on number job. Yeah, I'm going to do like I'm telling you something. I'm sure you saw expressions like you don't want the they want the state to be a night watchman sort of. You are only preserving and protecting against invasion. That is what you should do. Says hospice, the libertarians. Don't come and interfere. Say so you can't sell your thing at this point. No, no, no. So you see how it's getting to what some have called capitalism. They don't interfere because you are going against your boundaries, yeah, beyond your boundaries. All the state must do is minimal, all you have is a minimal responsibility you have, which is what? Just to protect us from invasion. So if you are taxing to get armory and stuff like that, so people's entitlement, what they have added their labor to, will not be interfered with. That's fine. Going beyond that and building roads and what have you, if you have money to do it, philanthropy, fine. But you, you say you want to go and build road hospitals. <laughs> you want to give us, we are taking my money. This is where the rich guys or those who are stressing, if you like, uh, right, liberty, freedoms, are saying that one is not legitimate. Then the communist folks will come in. Okay, thank you very much, my lady. I'll take Joyce Akins now and then we'll go to Anthony Lamptey. What do you have to add to what we have said so far? Please go ahead. Lady Joyce, please go ahead. Please, can you hear me, Joyce? Hello, dog. Yes, go ahead now. I'm sorry for the noisy environment. Yes, don't worry, we'll manage it for, for um, the time that you're speaking. Yes, please. Um, it's like I've said most of what I wanted to say. <laughs> then I'm talking to my dad. I'll just say that. I'll just say that there's the quality in the society that draws people. Um, some people will not agree to like, agree that um, they don't acquire uh, for others to also acquire something. So he said that for, for people to benefit, for everyone to benefit, um, they come to an agreement with the, the, the rich come to in an agreement with the poor people. Like for them to like um for the rich to also kind of understand that they Okay, thank you. So that ultimately, take note that the supposed disadvantage where I'm taking from you 
to give to the other, or we are giving some people special attention and more supposed benefits than the others, is ultimately to our collective advantage, both as the rich and the poor, both as the supposed visually impaired and the one that has all the vision intact. So both for the one in the traffic, ordinary person, and then the, the big man, you know, the medical food, the judge, the national security detail, whatever, who has been given permission to skip the queue. If we allow them to skip, we will think that we will be you know, they say he should go with him, he should be in the traffic. Perhaps he's going to stop an invasion at the border to benefit us as a collective. You and I are doing stop anything. All we know is Mada Anna Mada. Oh. <laughs> when we sleep, we are asleep. We wake up, we take our car, we are going. You don't know what people dealt with at night there. Not spiritual, physical at the borders. If they want to, then they will tell us that look, this night, if God had not been on our side, as our bodies would have been infiltrated with X, Y, Z. So if you were in the queue, sometimes very frustrating. Then you hear beep, pop, beep, 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 beep. Then they, you have to move. No space. You have to squeeze and squeeze and create space for the cat to come and pass because it has a coat of arms or something on it. It's not always that we should get angry because the demands made on us are not the same. And so what Madame said, which I want to I want to key it into our discussion so you see the relevance, is that the disadvantage, this is the difference principle, that is the one that is contentious. Okay, the, the equality principle, normally you, you won't contend with it much, you won't argue with it much because of course people should be given equal basic liberties, eh? all extents of should be given that because we are all human beings. Nobody was uh, was born by a tree. We are all humans. We should be treated equal. So that one is not too contentious. It is the second part, the second principle, which is twofold. You see, the second principle is this one, two in one. The sub one for the second pr uh, principle, which encourages some kind of rearrangement. You are arranging in a way that may look discriminatory, see I'm speaking, because it has a higher good in mind. That good is for the collective welfare. So in the end, it wouldn't be cheating after all, because all of us will benefit. That is the, the difference principle. And that is where Rawls's emphasis, if you like, would, would be on what? Equity, then not on equality per se. Let's write that somewhere. So there is emphasis on equity, not equality. Okay, equity, not equality. And I'll take uh, Lampe. Lampe, go ahead. No, Clive, you said it all, but I'll, I'll add something a little to it. Please add, please um, add. Go ahead. <laughs> for the fair, um, fair equality of opportunity. Um, yeah. um, talks or like, yeah, it talks against discrimination. Like people with the same level of um, 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 talent should be given the, the like, given the opportunity. For example, um, let's say somebody in um, a village in the Volta region who yeah. have um, what is uh, who does not have access to electricity or what, and somebody in Accra, and let's say like they are in uh, GHS three, they've written their uh, BC. Um, the one in Accra got, let's say, 15, and the one in the Volta region got, let's say, 6. And their, their first choice was at least at the college. Mm -hmm. I see um, the one in the Volta region is from a village. So, like, like um, you, you, you're not admitting um, in Addis Ababa college. And the one yeah. in, uh, let's say, in Accra, is from the city because it's um, uh, uh, talking against it. We should all, all give them, um, should all be given the same opportunity for us to, um, let's say, exhibit. Yeah, Very good. something like that. So the, yeah, so the opportunities must be the same. That's what I talked about, the accessibility. Yeah. So that you don't say in the name of, oh, this one is poor, this one comes from far away. So you don't give 
opportunity. That thing is opportunity. Access must be equal. Even in your bed to arrange, you cannot determine which people should come in and which people should go. That's that happens when you are bidding for uh, staff, job, something. Uh, yeah. You are bidding, you know, you have, you have opened uh, 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 access for people to apply into the company today. You say, oh, no, 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 but that access, they have blocked all people from so and so place. They are already rich. If they go for, don't apply. No, you can't do that. That is not uh, good for treating people as ends. Human beings are not treating ends. So you can use this as means to an end. That place, we don't have to look at whether someone is rich or poor from any high or low. No, it has to be an opportunity. Because I'm rich, I can't be, I can't be a, you shouldn't reward my talent because I'm a, a rich man's son. So now even if I was first in the exam, you should make me get a fair because this boy, his father has riches. But the guy learned. He's skillful. He can play the keyboard. The, the competition is who can play. He's playing. You say he's too rich. You don't know. Or they will have money. This money, you that we say we'll give them. A thousand, thousand. He, tells, he uses it to wash, to buy kebab after school. So we, we should give it to the people who are. But that's cheating. That is not rewarding the talent. This is so important. You say I put it in red. So the opportunity, you know, that is the access, must be same for all, regardless of your position. That is why you have to wear the veil of ignorance. And that is why you have to assume an original position because you may not have been Bill Gates' son or the person may not have been. Will the rule apply regardless? Yes. When then do you look out for bridging the gap? You bridge it. Let's, let's write this. Please write this down. I think I should let you write it down so that I don't forget. One expression that captures everything that Ross is doing. First, there's a general principle that captures his two in one principle. Okay, so you may write it down. It says it's a quote, I think. So all social values, this is Rawls' general conception of justice. If you want to understand the conception of justice as fairness, simply put, it is what? It is this that all social values are to be distributed equally. See the word? Equally, unless just say, unless an unequal distribution of any or all of these values is to everyone's advantage. I repeat again: all social values are to be distributed equally, unless an unequal distribution of any or all of these values is to everyone's advantage, excuse me, advantage. Okay, this is what he's trying to achieve. And this is what he renders in two ways. He presents that in two main ways. First, under the principle of equal basic liberty for all, like Madame said, that's the first principle. The principle of equal basic liberty for all. That is, each person is to have an equal right to the most extensive, Madame read it earlier, basic liberty, which is compatible with a similar liberty for others. It's the same like the liberty for others. It, com it is compatible. They can cohere. They can live together. So the liberties I'm enjoying and the one you are enjoying must cohabit. There shouldn't be any tension between that. It's just talking about a freedom, the basic freedom that we have, even if we're discussing the state of nature or or all the other uh, discussions we've had, there are certain liberties you can't take from the person. If you take it from her, he or she ceases to be woman. Okay, so respect that and enhance it. That is the first principle. First, number one. Then the second one, the difference principle. I said, remember that these two principles are aimed at achieving the justice as fairness that I have earlier given you. Treat people, when it comes to social values, treat it or distribute it, share it in a way that is equal, unless an unequal treatment will augur for what? Everyone's advantage, will lead to everyone's advantage. See, when we are serving food at table, we have family, we have some who have a certain lack in their system, maybe because of, Maybe they are anemic. 
We give them more of the meals, aspect of the meal that will give blood. We are our family, aren't we one? But you see that they may get a lot of greens, greens, green, 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 proteins here and there a little. Then yours is Sakura. Oh, you have it, but a little. <laughs> I keep saying that we give the daddies rather the big, big, big meat, proteins, chepe. Then they say they do some pion, some pion, some pion, some pion, their food. It's not right. The reason why we give more to the one who needs it, remember, if any one of you has seen the communist thinking, or better to the socialist thinking, to each according to his need, from each according to his ability. Take from the person what he's able to do. Not what you need. You take from the person what the person can give. Then you give to everyone the work he or she should do according to their ability. So if you are setting exams, you are setting a level 100 exam, and you set it as if you are setting PhD, you the teacher, you don't know anything. The same way, if you also go and ask level 100 questions, you know, level, what, PhD students, questions that are like level 100, it's like you don't know your stuff. The same with uh, work workload. You cannot give a child, a baby, a child, eh? one year or class one, plenty of homework. Some people think that when they do that, it means the school is good. Oh, you are sick. You, this is a child. After 30 minutes, they should be jumping, playing, singing. So if you want them to be learning, then use the learning component. You know? Make it playful. So if it is a square and a rectangle you are teaching them, you should better look for some pineapple bee and cut them into triangles and apple bee into square. That is also sustain their attention. Otherwise, they are just impressing you. What you are seeing is not entering their head. They are waiting for you to turn, and then they someone will get up and jump on the table and wiggle the wrist and sit again. Children, the need the child has, it's not your logic and your mathematics. Plenty that you have been teaching from school, I will go for uh, extra classes, after extra classes, evening classes, after evening classes, mommy classes, the after mommy classes, daddy classes. Why? Three years. What has the child done? Five years, class two. Let them play because there's pressure ahead in life. <laughs> Let them play a little to each according to his need, from each according to his ability. He can only give what he can. That principle is very strong with the extreme folks on the, uh, those who talk about what? Our collectivity. So you, the one who has more, the emphasis is give more. Look at how, how tax, taxes, how tight are changed, those who pay tight. It's 10% percentage. Not, oh, I brought thousands. Everybody's clapping for you. Do we know how much you got that we are clapping for you? If I have 200 million pounds and I bring even 10,000 Ghana cities, who told me, who told you I've been faithful with my title? You see that? That's why the man, Jesus, was standing by the offering book. And he, he could tell that it's only the poor woman standing there, who has, the widow, who gave the greatest amount. God is wabindred. God is brilliant. He said, this one, these two widows might, coins too, no, that the woman has put in, is the highest offering given. Meanwhile, people were displaying their own, carrying it on their shoulder like something, putting it on the time and throwing their khakis there. He says, if I work the math, this woman has given beyond what she can. Because 20, no, 20 pesos was two, that's all she has. She gave all. You to go and bring all you have, and let's see if it will be the car you drew, you drew there. You have 10 cars, some stolen, some yours. Bring up, then you can equate with her. So if you think of all these several examples I've given, just to show you what our friend is doing, that the difference principle is not there to nullify the earlier principle. No, it is to enhance it. Meaning that sometimes in your bid to ensure equal treatment for all, which is paramount, you may end up rather disadvantaging the collective us by the way you disadvantage. So you say, equal to everybody equal. So the man is in the traffic. And there's an emergency at the hospital. It's a medical doctor, heart surgeon. And the policeman has stopped the traffic. Everyone is standing. He's waiting for this direction to go. Meanwhile, the man is stuck there. There's an emergency. Do you know who is there? The person there is also taking care of our budget. If something happens to him, you and I will not be paid. We will be hungry. But some will die. Some will be sick, etc. So this one man sitting there, if we let him jump the queue 
and we go to the hospital. It is for our benefit. That is when this, the, the difference principle comes up. Thank you so much, uh, Lamte. Let me see if there's another hand. Very good. Oh. I'm so, yes, please. Is it Anthony? Oh, please, sir. Yes, please. You want uh, to add something? Yeah. Please. Yeah. No, 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 it's yes. big. Add it. Thank you very much. Add it. Principles. And for the uh, difference, uh, different uh, principle, it emphasizes on the equal distribution of work, especially right, etc. To the least advantage members of the society. I want to use our mm. politicians, politicians now, for, right. for example. Mm -hmm. Somebody has stolen less than 10,000 CDs or 100,000 yes, CDs. Yeah. Mm. Yes, he has been caught. He sent him to, uh, to court, and the court ordered him to return the money. Meanwhile, a farmer in the village is hungry and has like stolen somebody's plantain. And, um, hmm. The court has driven him for less than 10 years. I said, no, I'm going to go to That's the way. What is that? Um, um, like and there's a say that equality to them is like the, the least advantage. Um, um, how do I say? I agree. The poor man is the poor man is cheated. Um, that's what I want to yeah. add. Thank you so much. It's an important uh, addition which even illustrates it more. How sometimes we we hmm, you let me hold my fire because if I start, I'll use the next 20 minutes <laughs> to fire. <laughs> and, and then I upload it there to whom it may concern. But that's the problem, you see. So the poor is constantly getting poorer, the rich getting richer. You ask the person to refund. I mean, if you if I took that amount of money, you think you'll be sitting there. Even if I invested it, by the time you ask me to refund, I can bring you your money and I have time to trade Africa. I mean, when someone went to steal a goat, we don't say go stealing goat, no. But goat, it be at six and Ghana. That's one cry is grandpa goat. Oh, some, some, okay, so I'm goat. But if you know Ghana goat, proper goat, that has suffered that, the man, the owner himself is not eating. How would the goat eat? So the goat is 400 Ghana, 300 skinny goat. But you go and steal it. And if you're not careful, steal, let me keep. Six months, 12. Then multiply the months that the goat brother is spending in, in jail against the 50 something million dollars that the person in, in, in a BAM or politician or sofa or lecturer somebody has to stole it. Multiply it and let's see the person will live in, in jail, die, his generations after him will live, die generations after and they will he will still not have finished paying. But look at how we sometimes we do so that that is law. When you graduate him by the grace of God you go and pursue more. then you help us improve. Some have done their bit. Then you also go and apply the philosophy there and help us administer justice, at least distributive justice. If we won't do the other ones, when we are sharing, you have to be fair. You see, some, sometimes people will ask, like this assignment I open, suppose, oh, no. but this one, if you just open it for me, I'll, I'll just upload it quickly. And I say, no, you don't understand. <laughs> I can help make up. Yeah, I stopped, so I'll continue now. Someone didn't have the advantage that you had. So it looks like the same exam, the same assignment. Madam, so if some people did it and have now come, this is the eighth week. Open what we did in week one. Let me also, it's not done that way. It's not fair. Week one, someone was still finding a bed. The, the person didn't have the reader. Had to keep looking. Even the phone to borrow to do the work, he, he was now looking, pressure. But he or she managed within that one week to read and submit the work. You have come the eighth week. You want to do the work that was done in week one. 
You have used eight weeks. You want to use eight weeks. That is not a fair system. So people don't understand. They think that, oh, after all, that same work, I'm now also presenting. Maybe open it for me. It's not, no, no, it's not like that. <laughs> it has implications. Okay. And so though all those are coming to play here. And we want to make sure we have captured it. So you wrote down the first one. And then I read out uh, in support of uh, Eunice what she said about the equal basic liberty for all, which is each person is to have an equal right to the most extensive basic liberty, which is compatible with a similar liberty for others. That is very important, the first one. Then the difference principle, which, which is twofold. The difference principle is A and B, two in one. What does it say? It's stressing on social and economic inequalities, society status. Mm -hmm. This is a judge's son. This one was the president's son. Maybe I can place lecturers there. This is the lecturers, brothers, sisters, uncles, friends, whatever. So that clout, you carry it on your shoulder, and then it will just be opening doors for you at breaking protocols and going left, right, center, associations, and what have you, alumni, or whatever. Okay, social and economic. Economic has to do with, I think, money, most of all, eh, most importantly. Eh? Economic inequalities, they are not equal. Madam, one of us said, we are not, we don't have an equal economic status for everyone. So such social and economic inequalities, according to Rawls, should be arranged so that they are both a, what? reasonably expected to be to everyone's advantage. We have said that, that's the first one. Arrange it in a way that will be to everyone's advantage. If we're discussing it reasonably, mm -hmm. as rational people, reasonably. Mm -hmm. And then two, they should do that because we want it to be to everyone's advantage, 90. We restrict certain people. Very important intervention, let me tell me. I had not stressed that much earlier, okay? Don't say that because of that, we have blocked all the rich people. Every application from this thing will block it. If they think we are giving uh, meters, electricity meters, ECG, but certain people, they are it. So that's those people when they apply for it, don't, don't even admit it. Let's look for those who are in so and so and so and so places. That is, that is discrimination. We don't care what the end will be. You can do that. Make it open to all. So that's the B part. Let it be attached to positions and offices that are what, open to all, accessible to all. And then if you did that, it would still be the difference principle you are pursuing, ensuring that the disadvantages that benefit all yet are open to all as you do the supposed equitable distribution. Okay, If we did those two, then we'll meet the very broad conception of justice as fairness, which you can summarize us. I read it out to you earlier to write down. All social values are to be, it includes burdens, both benefits and burdens are to be distributed equally unless an unequal distribution of any or all of these values is to everyone's advantage. That means that a gentleman is stressing what equity, equitable distribution and not necessarily equal distribution. Very, very good. We are so done. Let me see if there is. Okay, Manuel Edia, do you want to add one more? That's right. Um, no, please. Um, you, you, are, you are okay here. Yeah. So I can take two. Uh -huh, okay, go ahead. Um, I have a problem with Ross on his bill of ignorance, in which he is okay. um, supposed to be. Everyone, please write getting, down the critique. Uh, what your class rep is setting us off nicely. So he wants to show us the critique meaning what problems, objections, challenges we can have with the very eloquently laid out uh, justice as fairness. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so, uh, the problem I have with Ross is on his veil of ignorance, in which he um, yes. supposed to be means of getting um, or deriving fair and justice or justice. As if human being is touched or um, human not connected to qualities. And this, this is what um, my man, I call my man, just, just 
there was um, criticizing the bill of ignorance possible. But how Ross is treating the thing is like human beings are detached from well society. Done. Well done. That's why I had a classroom. Mo, how can we be pretending that we don't know whether the decision we are making now will affect us or will not affect us? We already know. <laughs> we are already existing human beings who are necessarily already attached to people. We have connect connections, both biologically and status-wise and what have you. We are not now coming to pretend that we are now entering into human society. We are already members of human society with attachments. So if I am a lecturer and you, you are making decisions right now, that will affect people in the public service. I know how I'll make it to Tom. <laughs> so Ross shouldn't come and treat our song, <laughs> which is supposed veil of ignorance. There is no real veil of ignorance we have because we are already, this is the point, we are already human beings living within human habitation. So the decision making, which is supposedly inspired by a veil of ignorance, is not actual. There isn't any. It's difficult to pretend that you don't know the implications of that principle we are going to apply. Why? Because we already know who we, be, who we are connected to, whether we are in the middle class, high class or low class, whether we are in academia or church, whether we are Muslims or Christian, whether we are culturally inspired, African, what have you. We know all those. So if we are going to make a decision whether Africa should, be, should receive compensation for all the crimes done to them or not, I already know I'm an African. What, what do you want me to say, yes or no? I'll say yes. I can't wear a veil of ignorance and pretend that maybe I could have been the white man or I could also, I, that is pretense. We are making actual life decisions already tied to what? Society in a certain way, inextricably tied. So your man, uh, Emmanuel, your man was criticizing roles and we mentioned it when we were doing Taylor, that this is one of the problems he has even with roles. Who, has a, a, who is trying to give an, a hypothetical a, you know, view of human society. Well done. That is one of the critiques. Another one. Eunice's hand is up again. Eunice, you pray today. Charlie, have a day. City campus, difficult text now. Oh my God, crazy. Go ahead. Eh. Well done. Very yeah. impressive. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. He is yeah. not being possible. Yes, yeah. so Ross can also say that he's, he's, he's like that girl. So it means it's not it's not something that can come to life. And and then you have also how he exactly. Then you have helped Emmanuel critique that we are not talking things that look good on paper. <laughs> he Ross says he wants to give us a prescription that will help us make actual decisions. Okay. So that is the tension. Assuming a veil of ignorance, we can pretend about it, but whether the outcomes, the principles that we generate will work fairly will be the issue. If I am currently the vice chancellor, I pray that it will be so, God will. But we now have our own prof and our bank for them. If she's supposed to decide who she will bring in or who she will not bring into the University of Ghana, you say she should wear a veil of ignorance and pretend that she doesn't know <laughs> who will be admitted or who will not be admitted. Ah. So if she has her, her third born or fourth born, whatever, her children are coming to the university and we are deciding the principle. You think it will not inspire how she makes decisions? If we say, oh, all those from Accra this year, we should take just 10% and be picking people that will come from a uh, distant a distance away from Accra so that we enrich our diversity or whatever. And she too knows that all her children and her sister's children and you know friends, the church friends and colleagues that are dear to her, their children are schooling in Accra, Presec and what have you. You say she should still wear a veil of ignorance and pretend that she didn't know in deciding which principle. She could say, oh, I think that uh, we should reconsider our idea of just focusing on outstations you know, you know how she speaks it. <laughs> I think we have to have a second look at that because we may also have people in Accra because she has an interest. 
This is the point uh, uh, Emmanuel and others like Emmanuel raise about the supposed assumption of what avail of ignorance. It might not be disadvantageous, it might not even be discriminatory, but she will look out for her interest as well. Powerful as she is. You know, you think Ronaldo's our current president is what who I'm referring to. Ronaldo, if he has to sit with cabinet to discuss something, and then we are making they say, oh, some of the regions have already been developed, they have enough. So we should focus on the orphaned ones, only three. All resources that we have this year, we should focus on that until they also come up to the level of disadvantage. And then when they mention the names, where he, he feels dear, <laughs> it might not necessarily be even where we think he, he comes from. It might be maybe he's attached to so-and-so place because of the wife or the children or something that is someone that is dear to him. So he would even prefer that we give attention to say uh, uh, Bolly. Then you want to make a decision. You think he won't? It, it, he will not be inspired by his interest. He knows it. But Ross is saying when it comes to that, because we do not know where our attachment will be, where our interest will be, who we will like and where we will not like, and those things in tea, we will be able to make a good first decision. Our response is, Uniano, Raya, Ross, we know. At least some of them we know. So we may not know the exact thing, but we have an interest. And so we are able to discuss in a way that will meet that interest as rational being. So the veil of ignorance may have holes in it, so to speak. Okay, that's a critique. The second one you can also raise still with the original position. As soon as you question the absoluteness of the veil of ignorance, then you accept that it's a hypothetical one, like Erica is saying, then it means that. If it's hypothetical, then in actual human society, where we live in, we don't live in a hypothetical world of suppositions. It works when you are arguing, but when we are practically discussing, people will be influenced by their attachments, by their connectedness, you see, by their interests. Why? Because they know it. So the original position will work as an, as, as an assumption, as a starting point. But when we have to actually make decisions, it will affect it sometimes in a discriminatory way. No wonder certain parts of the regions of the nation haven't seen so much development because they haven't had so much representation at the places that matter. Recently, I heard that someone has been given a deputy ministerial appointment, the whole nananum, and then they will respect them. I saying thank you for an appointment <laughs> as a deputy somebody. It should tell you. So if you're some, I'm speaking literally now, if you're something is not in power, you will see development party, you see some nothing. Meanwhile, process, we should assume a veil of ignorance and make sure that we are being fair to everyone. I mean, let me give you a practical one to end this particular. Suppose that you are my prayer partner church. We are praying that God will help you to get an A or A's in all your courses. I'm teaching you this course. Every day you come to my office after church, then we pray together. Oh, God will help you. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. We ask that my sister succeeds, my brother gets an A in social and political philosophy. <laughs> I don't have any, but just think about that. Then now I am sitting in front of my uh, my whatever the pile of script. I'm going to grade. Your paper is in front of me. I'm going to grade it. Remember a prayer topic. How can Rose tell me that when it is like this, I will assume a veil of ignorance? Which assumption of veil of which ignorance? The person's paper, the person whose paper is lying in front of me is my prayer partner. You are praying that is shouldn't I help God to make the <laughs> <laughs> That's what, how some people think. Okay, so some may work with integrity, or some too may even, you know, ignore it. They won't even look at it at all and all that. But some too won't. So it is not a given done deal like assume a bill of ignorance and we'll have a fair system necessarily, not at all. Okay, then there is the assumption of rationality. Well, some people are of the reasoning from rationality. This is also a critique, so you can. We are we have attacked the original position by the same argument that we use. We just developed it a bit uh, from the veil of ignorance to the original position. So there is nothing like an original position because we are already born into society. We are not abstracted from society first, then we integrate into it. 
we don't. We are always necessary. Even if we go into the chambers to go and make a decision, still, that is either I'm female, so I'm looking out for women, you know, empowerment, perhaps, or I am a church person, I'm a Muslim, so I'm looking out for Muslim interest, or I'm African. So there's a certain sense of what? Connectedness, even from the starting point, like that. So when he says an original position devoid of any attachment to society and the particular issues under discussion, well, yes, for some, but I may not even know the people that are I'm supposed to judge the matter at the court as a judge and I've moved to the law court. Okay, I may not know them, but I may feel for someone that I see, like a mother who had to steal in the shop to take care of her children. They caught her in the cameras and she's sitting there. I may say, well, this one, I just have to assume it and apply the laws. Well, I'm also a mother. I don't know her, but I can relate. That's the point uh, Taylor was telling Rose, that you do not come pretending as if it is the individual sitting somewhere purely applying rules. No, people are connected naturally already. They don't choose it. They are like that. So we can only work at what improving it and hopefully going beyond it, but it will not be totally eradicated at all. People are sensitive. So it, it can have, uh, you can play into how they decide on the principles or the actual application of principles. At the evolution of the principle, even uh, drawing those laws themselves, yes, it can it can infiltrate into it. How much more its application? Then the third one I was going to add is the assumption of rationality. For you to think that as rational human, we are all rational, and so when people don't make decisions always based on rationality or reason. Sometimes just based on benevolence. If people are begging me for money on the street, I don't owe them any obligation. I just feel that, so oh, let me keep. So it's not always that people act or make decisions based on what is rational. Sometimes it's, it's not reason-based, it's just emotions, okay? It's just um, pity, I pity them. So the, the, uh, the Western society, put it on, Europe, may bring things that they say is aid. Sometimes I question the aid though, but they, they will bring it, perhaps not because we, they owe us, or we owe them, what is it? They owe us an obligation. No, it could be because they pity us the way we are hungry and hustling. You see, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a beggar. So, those who beg in my name should stop it. I don't like it at all. I'm not a beggar. Eh? I'm not a lender. The lender is always a sasa. I'm not a borrower. Eh? The borrower is always a slave to the lender. So, if you keep borrowing, we will borrow, become a slave to you. Now, Spiritual, you are small. They are complaining. My point is, it will not be out of rationality, rational deliberation. In other words, I reasoned about it and I thought this is the logical thing. To, no, no, no. Sometimes it's just emotional, benevolence, gift. But a more stronger argument against rationality there is that people out of rational deliberation may choose to take risk. So don't say that if we, we assume that people behind the veil of ignorance will act rationally, and so reason will lead them to these principles where they will look out for what will benefit them also. So they will make the right rules. That's the argument, okay? They will reason, and so they will, they will choose the principles that will benefit everyone. Now, people reason and they take risk. They don't always do what is reasonable from their deliberations. Sometimes people think, and then they go and give, I mean, I heard, I don't know how true that is, that one of these uh, association folks, association, in the name of association of this association of that, took so much from students in the name of getting them a place of abode or something. I heard it, so I can't verify. So much, I'm told, in the millions, of Ghana cities, okay? That is risk, and when to invest it, I don't know if it's a positive investment or a negative one, but that is what the person, it's a risk. Look at the people who were investing in a, a gentleman who had an issue, I don't want to mention this now because that thing is people's in Tamkasi. So when you mention it, then you, you remind them of their pain. But something, something, 
<laughs> Can I mention it? Gold. You know, it was a risk. Man's gold. Hey, Brian, that if you say if someone's beautiful, <laughs> should have <laughs> good year. I said gold. I'm perfectly a cow. If it had been women's gold, like I won't have problem. Eh? Men. <laughs> the point is the people thought about it in the anomaly of reasoned. They don't know what the options were. But rational deliberation led them there. And so what you go and say is rational. When people reason, they will, they will make the choice that will benefit them and others and, and ensure that it's, it's not always that rational deliberation leads people to look out for what is in their interest. Sometimes it makes them take risk. That's all. This brother is Johnny Bravo. Look at the way Johnny Bravo is behaving, even now that you are a relationship. He's beating you more than Bukum Baku will beat uh, someone. They say, oh, but uh, I think he will change. Reason. You are still a human being. You are thinking. But people will still enter the relationship, work with a person for years, especially in the economy, and then they still turn into marriage. And the beating will migrate from squabbles to real blows. You see? People take risk. That's the point I'm making. After rational deliberation, they know that it's dangerous, but they, they make decisions that therefore what? Therefore, even behind the veil of ignorance, if we were to assume it, and we assume that people are rational there, it doesn't mean that the decision they will make will necessarily be a rational one. That's all we are saying. People may just take a risk and say that, okay, in such a society, we want only the rich to eat, the poor should sweep some. Knowing very well that he could be the poor person, it doesn't matter. I could also be the rich one. So I'm doing cha-cha. That's how you bet. So they could make the wrong decisions. Not according to what uh, Ross pre presumes will happen. You see, that's the point I'm making. They may risk, even as rational human, because in this human society, cultural human society, people can go and put their car, their house, car crying, right? their house. Some even bet their wives. <laughs> this poor pie, this person, you have to take your wife for two months. And yet we are. And I nearly said that. <laughs> for you to go and risk an inheritance that, oh, this one, I'm sure, I'm sure I win. They give the papers up. It's risk. It is possible that you may win the bet and get the other person's house in addition to yours. But what if you don't? Rational human beings make those decisions. So we are telling Rawls that behind the veil of ignorance, where we assume that the people making the decisions are rational, we cannot also assume that even as rational beings, they will necessarily make rational decisions. And on that note, I think you guys did a brilliant job at Rawls. Just filling up. Fill it up a little with um, some few commentaries on the communist manifesto and then the libertarian one in your revision again. So that just in case we see those in the exam or some short answer questions, are able to capture the main thesis of the communists and then the main thesis of the libertarian. I think we did some libertarian. I tried on one or two lines of the communist, but our focus was on roles quota. Any questions. If there are no questions, then I think it's a good time to end. I want to commend the class again. You made my work very easy. So I could, I could just uh, enjoy and talk plenty. Now people say you are saying the thing I wanted to see and all that. And that is a good sign, very good sign. When we meet God willing next week, we will engage. Let, don't let me say anything that uh, will be off the spot. I'll communicate to the class after I look at our course outline and then touch on uh, and look at what, what we want to finish up with. Then we can put everything together. Your classroom tells me <laughs> tells me that uh, we would want to do another online next week. Then perhaps the last session would be in person. We want to see if that will work out.
whatever it, however it turns out, let's communicate and I'll send an official note to the whole class. Any questions? I'm ending, please. Emmanuel, please, is it okay to end? I don't know if there's something you want to communicate. No, dog, dog, is yeah, okay. All right, if anything comes up, please let me know. I will pull this uh, recording down quickly after our session. I hope I'm able to do it before I meet the main campus folks. Then I upload on the channel and share the link like I always do. Have a wonderful week. All the best. Thank you, Doug. Thank you too very much. Thank you.